Hi, DMC family. Today is Thursday, 7th of May, day 51 of MCO. Today's scripture is from Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 27, about the parable of the ten minas. Now, because this is a rather long passage, may I get you first to pause this video and read it for yourself before we continue. And here's a story of Jesus managing his disciples who were expecting that the kingdom of God installed by Jesus would expel the dominating Roman rule over Israel in their present time. They have not really understood the principles of the kingdom to come. The tricky part about understanding the kingdom of God can be summed up uh, this way. It is here, but not yet. It is partly present and partly future. Many of the blessings are here to be enjoyed on this earth, but much more are to be ours in the future, in the new world. And some of the power of the kingdom is available now, but not all of it. This is the mystery of the kingdom, that it is somewhat here because Jesus came, but not yet until He comes again the second time. And some of the curse and misery of this present world can be overcome by the presence of the kingdom. But some of it cannot be. And we know that in our own life experiences. Let me quote John Piper. He said this, The decisive battle against sin and Satan and sickness and death has been fought and won by the king in his death and resurrection. But the war is not over. Sin must be fought, Satan must be resisted, sickness must be prayed over and groaned under, and death must be endured until the second coming of the king and the consummation of the kingdom. In case you are not aware of Romans chapter 8, verses 22 to 23, it speaks about the groaning of our spirits and even of creation, waiting like in the childbirth for the new heaven and earth and our new resurrected bodies. That is a hope as followers of Jesus Christ when the kingdom of God will fully and completely come. So in this parable, Jesus describes himself in verses 12 to 13 as, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. So each servant was given one mina, which is equivalent to about three months of wages. When the king came back, the first servant was rewarded because with that one mina given, he had invested it and received a profit 10 times the original amount. The second servant gave a return of five times and was also rewarded. However, the third servant did nothing with it, giving the excuse that the king was a hard and reason unreasonable man he was rebuked that he could, at the very least, deposit it in a bank and receive some interest. And this servant, whom the king called wicked, was thrown out of the kingdom and his mina was given to the first servant. The implication was that the servant did not really expect the king to come back and was not at all concerned about the king's return and the king's business. And Jesus said this, verse 26, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The overarching big idea is about faithfulness to what we have been entrusted with while on this earth. What are the lessons in this parable? The first lesson is this, Jesus will come again someday. And His first coming was as a suffering servant to atone for our sins. And the second coming will be with power and great glory. This is the hope that all followers of Jesus Christ have in the groaning of our life and our world in the present time. And lesson two is this, He has entrusted something with us, whether it is our life, our time, our talents, our gifts, or our wealth. He expects us to be faithful in investing and multiplying them. And lesson three is this, God will be fair in His rewards and will entrust us with greater things in the new kingdom. He sees all things and knows the motives of our hearts. It is not by how much we have done or what we have done, but by how faithful we have been to what we have been entrusted with. 
So let's continue to stay faithful with the future in mind, even when things are hard going. Well, Jesus has never promised us an easy life, but He does promise us His presence through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, may all that you have entrusted me with multiply. May the labor of my hands produce much eternal fruits. May it become a blessing to many as we navigate the complexities of life. Grant me patience and joy as I serve you, looking forward someday to your coming, when you will say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. We pray that in our time at home during this MCO, we have grown spiritually in you and have grown in greater capacity to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God bless you and have a great night.